G'day, it's Robbie here again. Well, today we're going to look at this ER32 collet chuck. This is the type of collet chuck that bolts onto a driving plate, and most small modern budget lathes have a driving plate on the end of the spindle. It's incorporated, so this will go onto whichever driving plate has the correct profiled spigot that goes into the back of this to mount it accurately. Here's some details on the unit. So we'll look at a couple of screen grabs now. As you can see, it's seventy-three dollars fifty Australian, which is reasonably good. It's uh, the smaller one that they sell on Banggood is eighty mil diameter. This is outside diameter. They also sell a one hundred mil diameter unit, which is for bigger uh, spigots. It'll have a bigger recess in the back. This is basically designed to fit on the seven by ten, seven by twelve, seven by fourteen lays. So that's the profile that you've got on the back for the mounting plate. Now if you compare the price of the 80mm to the 100mm, the 100mm is roughly $20 dearer. The profile may not fit your driving plate. You can make an adapter plate to go between the, the bolt up collet chuck and the driving plate on your lathe. So all things are possible. Okay, let's uh, pan out and have a closer look at this. If you ask the question, why would you go for this type of collet chuck when most people use this type of collet chuck? Well, the answer is pretty obvious, isn't it, when you look at it? Because this collet chuck, which is a collet chuck designed to go in the spindle, into the morse taper, and who use a, a big bolt to pull it up tight, this takes up the whole area of the um, spindle so you can't feed through you can't feed through this collet it, this collet chuck won't allow it to happen even though the collets themselves can feed through uh, the actual collet chuck won't let you do it because of all this metal that's going to be in the centre of your spindle that's where this type of chuck is good as I pointed out in the previous video because you can go right through you can feed through and it gives you the same capability as a normal chuck that would bolt onto your uh, driving plate or thread on even. So you can see what you're getting here. This has got a lot, big advantage over this one. When you look at the specification sheet or the write-up for the 80mm collet chuck, the steel is described as being high-speed steel, which made me raise my eyebrows because I've never heard of the collet chuck being made out of high speed steel but uh, you know who knows all things are possible I suppose when you look at the 100 mil version of this they ride up as carbide steel once again carbide steel could mean anything anything with tungsten in it any high speed steel with tungsten in the base leak can be called as, as car, called carbide steel it's, uh, it's so flexible now whether it is or whether it isn't, I don't know. I would expect it would be tool steel, and once again, what's tool steel made of? Well, it's an alloy. So we're talking alloys, and whatever the tungsten or chromium or moly content is, who knows? It's not stated on these uh, species sheets, and you just have to, you know, go with whatever scent. On the 80 mil version, they don't even tell you what the internal size is on the website. So that's not very good, it should be better than that. The idea is that even though this won't fit my Chinese lathe, it will, f or it should fit the Shorblin lathe, uh, the driving plate for that, which I showed in a previous video where I was ra uh, tr radially drilling it to, to balance, put some balance bolts in it. So we'll look at what we're going to mount it onto. Here's what's going on to. This is a threaded, because once again the Shorblin has got a threaded spindle and it has feed through, it uses W20 collets 
as supplied, but they're all pretty much worn out on the unit. And you've got to beat on them on the on the drawer bar to make them release. Whereas these are self-releasing; you don't have any of those dramas. And these are very easy to use. Good compression range, up to you know, a millimetre compared to other collets who haven't got anywhere near that. And yeah, they got a lot of pros and cons. Look it up, and you can uh, you can see the difference between the various types of collets. They've got pluses and minuses, all of them. Anyway. What we're going to do is we're going to mount this onto this. Now this, you might say, oh, that's, you know, it's a bit bodgy, Rob. Well, that's how it was when I got the old Shobman Lay. They actually had a BSA scroll chuck mounted on this. And from memory, it used these external points here, I think. I can't remember now for sure. This will use these points here. I have checked this for concentricity with the test indicator and it's pretty much perfect. Whoever did this, machined this up, did a good job on it. And years ago when I first got this, I and I was looking at chucks to go on it because I was originally thinking of replacing the, the BSA chuck. I ran the, the wall down tool post, tool post grinder over it and, and refaced it all so that should be pretty good too. Anyway, even though this isn't the ideal setup. It'll do the job, and I've put a couple of balance, counterbalance bolts in there to allow for the, to offset for the, the slot for the driving uh, notch for the for, for the dog that uh, this is really designed for. I never use drive dogs, so this thing is just going to waste. So, yeah, it, it should do the job. It should work okay. So I'll put it on the lathe and I'll run the test indicator over it and see what we've got for run out. First we'll take a couple of measurements to see what we're dealing with. Fifty-five dead on the money, look at that, fifty-five point zero zero. It couldn't be better than that. Fifty-five point zero zero. Good machining job. Fifty five point zero one. Fifty five point zero two. That's pretty damn good. roughness there on the edge but it's coming back to zero it's just a bit of wear and tear so overall the accuracy is within 0 0.05 millimeters it's probably yeah it's pretty it's a pretty fair statement I think so now we'll measure the faceplate run out. And we've got to dodge the drive dog notch and the holes that have been drilled in it for uh, the various chucks it's had on it. No, that's not too bad. I think that'll do the job quite nicely. Looking closely at the collet chuck, it is beautifully made. I mean, it's, it's very, very nicely machined. And running the ruler over it, 
there's no nastiness there, everything's good and flat, there's no concave or convex gremlins to cause your grief. So that's all good. The collet nut just screws up and down like butter, that's beautiful, really good. A little bit of side to side, end to end in the thread. But most of them have that. Certainly the the Morse taper one that I use all the time. Look at that. It's got a lot of wear in it, a lot of slot, but it's still good and accurate. When they pull up, they pull up okay. But, you know, tighter is better, and that's obviously getting a bit worn. If we compare it to the uh, tailstock one, once again, this has done a heap of work. There's not much movement in that one. A little bit. That would be the types of the whole bunch, probably. Mm, that's got more, so... The machining is... or the... The grinding inside is beautifully done. And, I mean, the thread looks terrific. Everything looks really good. Certainly, I wouldn't get too upset about it. But it's not absolutely perfect. It's... Uh, it's a good good piece of gear though, I think. And once it's pulled up, you know, everything's going to be pretty pretty damn rock solid. So I wouldn't get uh, wouldn't get concerned about that. One thing that is immediately obvious is that you're going to have to get a pin wrench or a C spanner to hold this, so you can do the nut up and undo it without the spindle turning. On the regular Morse type, you get a flat at the back of the collet chuck, and you can see they're slightly longer in overhang. But that's okay. I would have preferred to see it like like this, where they they can fit flats in there than having a stubby little short one like this. This is better for accuracy, but overall, this is a lot easier to use. And as I said, you don't get any sort of pin wrench with the, the chuck, so you're going to have to source one from somewhere, either make it, and you can make them, I mean, here's one I made, or you're going to have to get one out the old toolbox and make it fit. This will fit, it is the right, almost the right size. All i got to do is just adapt the, the square end and put a round one on it, which is no big deal, but I'm just saying, it's something to be aware of, otherwise you, you won't be able to use your nice new toy uh, as quickly as you want to. Alright, well, she's all bolted up now. Ready to go. And you can just see I've got the three allen headed bolts, spring washers on them. Right. Gotta balance weights are back. Everything clears quite nicely. So, we'll stick it on, take a reading. So we're looking at 0 0.02, 0 0.025, which is pretty good. It's better than you're going to get with a chuck, that's for sure. I mean, this is a, an old lathe. And you've got to allow for the fact that the head sock bearings have probably got a little bit of wear in them. Well, they've got more than a little bit of wear in them, and they've got a lot of wear in them. So this has actually turned out quite okay. It's certainly within the realms of hobbyist territory. I think they'd be happy with that. Move it out.
All right, we'll check it for axial run out. Moving it out a bit. There you go, so things are pretty good. They bulge up good. I mean, this is the way to test them. Rather than try and use the, the taper inside, I don't find that to be a very reliable F, you know, method, really. So... I'm completely happy with this. This is good. Certainly good for this old girl, that's for sure. You know, if you can get 0 0.02, you're doing okay. The little show indicator, which Banggood sent me a while back and I reviewed, is really a nice, really nice indicator. It's very, very reactive, very sensitive. And yeah, I use it all the time now. I, I, I love it, I think it's great. Okay. That's the, the run out factor. Pretty good. To keep the perfectionists happy, I've even gone to the extreme measure of dragging out the dial gauge so that there's no nasty cosine error to cloud their judgment. Wouldn't want to get flamed after all, would you? Okay, now to get the best possible accuracy out of your bolt up collet chuck, when you mount it on your driving plate, you have to get the torque on the mounting bolts correct. If you, if they're not even, or if you vary them one way or another, you can see a reaction in your accuracy readout. So when you do mount this, put a shaft in like I've got here and take your rings off the shaft and vary the tension on these bolts to see what reaction you get and you might have to play around with it a little bit just to get it spot on. This is pretty good, oh, these are all pretty even and uh, yeah apart from that it's pretty plain sailing provided the spigot on your drive plate is machined correctly and it, and it fits nicely on this. You saw me measure that at 55 millimetres, it was dead on the money and when I put these together there was just well, Nat's whisker of, of movement and I just uh, tapped on the uh, the plate to get everything exactly where I wanted it. So yeah. There's a bit of run out in the casting, but of course I've machined past that, so it's only cosmetic. Nothing to worry about. So that's it. The review's finished. There's some links in the video description on where to get this. And if you want to get the bigger version, the 100mm version uh, that has a 72mm diameter spigot in the back, whereas this has a 55mm spigot. So if you want to make up an adapter plate so you can fit it onto your larger driving plate, you may want to consider, you know, that size and also where the bolt holes line up. This only has three, three bolt holes, but the 100mm has, I think, half a dozen or so, it could be seven, I think it's four and three, so I think it's seven. Okay, that's it for me, I hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, that's it for now, see you next time, cheers.